Saturday, September 24th, we joined a group of dedicated individuals to conduct an invasive species inventory along the Bark River near Dowson, Wisconsin. As we gathered to discuss our strategy, we met our survey leadership team, Brad Steckert, Amanda Perzak, and Dr. Dan Carter. The main reason for the survey was the discovery of the Java water dropwort, an invasive species found throughout Asia. But we all had questions. I don't understand what them weeds are even doing here in the first place. I don't know how it got here. I don't know what if it was brought over here for food or. I think people grow for food, but it's, it was also there's a form in the ornamental, like aquarium pond trade. Yeah, there's like a pink form where the leaf edges are pink. Either for food or ornamentation, this is a plant that doesn't belong. You can see it's got leaflets of five here in the terrestrial. Um, this is when it's grown up and, and a little more mature. The, basically the central stem in the leaf, that's called the rachis, but the central stem is flattened on top. So that's, that's a pretty unique thing too that not many plants have. Mm -hmm. Water dropwort spreads when stems that have rhizomes break off and float downstream. We started our journey at Highway 67 and searched the banks for water dropwort. Dr. Dan was the first to call out an observation, and Brad marked its location while Amanda recorded its GPS location. The DNR will return to these locations and treat the invasive plants. Along the way, we encountered other invasive aquatic plants such as yellow iris and the dreaded watercress. Our next major find was closer to downtown Dowsman. Here, Dr. Dan gives us a breakdown on reed managrass. So this is reed managrass, an aggressive invasive grass. Um, it's similar to other mana grasses, but the outside of the leaves and the sheaths of the leaves that go around the stem feel like sand, sandpaper or shark skin. Um, but it also has very wide leaf blades. Once again, Brad flagged the location. We continued searching and were surprised by the reed mana grass invasion along Main Street in Dowsman. Mana grass spreads by rhizomes in the same fashion as the drop wart. But it's still a grass, so keep an eye out for seed heads. We continued winding our way down the Bark River and encountered a lot of deadfall that had fallen across the river. But we would have happily traded deadfall for the large amount of Java water drop ward that we found near Highway 18. Our trip wrapped up and we found something disturbing. A water drop wart seed head made its way down river in our canoe. This is how aquatic invasive species spread to other watersheds. Hell, we was just out for a little joyride in the canoe. I didn't know we could cause ecological damage. It's imperative that boats, be it kayaks, canoes, fishing boats, or yachts, are always cleaned after use, and any water is drained back into its source. I mean, I gotta clean my boat after every time I use it. Remember, clean boats equal clean waters, but we're the Waukesha Fox River Conservation Group. Why so much concern for the Bark River? Because the bark is only 12 miles from the fox, a dirty boat with a simple seed pod could easily transfer an invasive species. And it's not just a threat to the Fox River. Think about how many lakes are in close proximity to the bark. Now, now, you're right, you're right. We should clean our canoes after every usage. We hope you enjoyed this survey of the Bark River. Thanks for watching. If you like what we do and are interested in helping us out, contact us anytime. Environmental catastrophe!